Okay, well, it's the second day now, and uh, I've pulled the clamps off already, and this is kind of what we're left with. You can see there's an awful lot of glue squeeze out on there. Definitely plenty of coverage. And we've got a solid piece of wood now that we can trim up, clean up, and start making our template on it. All right, as you can see, we've got a lot of glue squeeze out, and we'd like this to be as flat as possible so we can register against our tabletop then. So I'm gonna get as much of this extra glue off as I can. We're not gonna be able to get it all, but we'll be able to get the rest of it with the table saw. I'm just looking for a somewhat flat surface. Typically I would use the table saw for this kind of cut, but we're running into a problem. The table saw blade is only extendable up this far and we're not getting to the edge of my wood. That's usually not a problem. I could easily go through one direction, flip it over and finish the other cut. But this is a bandsaw box. So we may as well just use the bandsaw for this. And we'll be able to do this cut a lot more safely on here. Uh, you won't get as straight of a cut on the bandsaw, uh, on the bandsaw, and you'll have to clean up your cuts. But we're gonna have to do a lot of sanding on this box anyway, so it's not really gonna matter in the end, and this is a lot safer. You can see right there, we're now at the point where we can get this right under here with no problems. There's just a small amount of gap. Now I want to get all of this extra here cut off. We don't want this piece on here. We're gonna try to square this all up. So I'm gonna bring my fence here over. We're gonna kind of gauge where we're at here. Line it up properly. Tighten down my fence. And I'm gonna go find a push block to shove this through with. And this is just an extra piece of the plywood that we used in the actual block here. Uh, this we can use to push the block through so that when the blade comes out the other side, it's going to be quite quick. We're going to slow down when it gets close, but it's still going to exit pretty fast. So we want our hands out of the way when that happens. So one benefit of the bandsaw is you do not have to use fence with it. You can freehand with the bandsaw. So I'm gonna go ahead and chop this section off here. It's worth mentioning, when you're pushing through, you don't want your hands to be in front of the blade. So I'm gonna be pushing equally on both sides of the blade, but I'm not gonna be pushing both hands or either hand into the blade. Time to start doing the templating and the drawing which can be the fun part okay what we're going to do here is we're going to make a nice area that we can use to decide what our box is going to look like i'm going to remove this tag from here because we're going to put some tape over this i'm going to make a new tag that just says bottom and that's, again, just to remind us of our orientation. We still have our back tag. Now we'll have our bottom tag. And now we could take some tape. I like the wide stuff for this. And just go straight across. We're gonna cover the whole face of this project. Now that we have that, we're gonna get a piece of paper. And I like to use this spray glue. This is just Scotch Super 77. I don't wanna spray it on top of my table saw. So I'm going to take my blocks of wood over to the floor. Just cover this with a light dusting of this Super 77 glue real quick. Okay, and just like that, I have a nice covering of that glue on there. 
gonna go ahead and put this paper across like so. I'm gonna need to grab a second piece. Now here's where you can really get kind of artistic with it. You can just sketch on what you're looking for, or you can use your tools. I just got these, these are just angle, or not angle guides, these are curved. Uh, some kind of, well, they, they help with curves. It's really nice to have something that you could just put up there where you want the curve and trace it around. Generic idea, I want maybe like a, organic, almost a leaf shape kind of thing. Okay, and I think that's kind of what we're gonna go with. I want to have some nice flat spots on the bottom. I might make this one a little bigger even. And a nice big drawer on the inside. So I'm gonna trace back over this with a uh, Sharpie. On the inside cut, I'm gonna make a larger Sharpie line because we're going to want to cut down the middle of this line with the blade, and this will make it a little easier to follow through with that. I'm just gonna walk you through my first cut. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, just cut along the outer line here. We're gonna cut out the basic shape of the box. Now I don't wanna cut exactly on this line. I'm gonna cut just outside of it. So we're gonna sneak up on that line later on using the, uh, the drum sander. But for now, we're just gonna try to remove the bulk of this wood, not really worry about if everything gets perfectly cut um, off, because again, we're gonna be doing an awful lot of sanding later to take care of that. So I'm going to just start entering near the line. You'll see how I continue through. Now you can see we've cut our first chunk out of here and that's gone and I've left just a tiny bit around the edge that we're going to be hitting with the sander later. I'm going to go ahead and just finish the rest of this. Just keep an eye on my hand placement. Never am I pushing into the blade where my hands could actually touch it. I'm going to be pushing past or I'm going to be pushing around, rotating it, making sure I keep any kind of fingers away from the blade. All right, here we go.
Okay, we've got the whole outer edge cut off. Uh, now we're gonna do the inner drawer facing. And what we're gonna do here is rather than trying to keep close to the line, we're gonna use this thicker line that we drew and we're just gonna try to cut that down the middle. Okay, the blade's stopped now, so we're gonna go ahead and back this out. Be careful not to be too aggressive. You could break your blade doing this. All right. Now we're gonna go down the opposite line. <laughs> Lots of sawdust in the air. Okay, let's go. So we finally got the center cut out of our piece. We're gonna back it out slowly just like we did on the other side. Remember, don't try this while the blade's moving. There we go. And there's our drawer. So these are gonna have to be shaped a little more. But there's the general an idea of our band stop box today. I'm going to take it over to the uh, drum sander. We'll do a little bit of shaping over there now. Now before we start using the drum sander here, I'm going to hook up my vacuum system to it. This goes to a filter up in my attic and with a simple button press, I can get a flow of air going around the sandpaper and past the actual thing that we're sanding, and that's going to take care of a lot of the dust and get it out of the air. This means that we're not going to have to wear a respirator on this device. Um, whenever I use something like the palm sander, it's a lot more necessary. Another thing that we're going to have to do is clean up this bottom. It's not exactly even, and we're going to want both of these pieces to be in plane with one another. My drum sander bench grinder is just large enough to meet this width. Otherwise, I'd have to get out a different tool that a lot of people probably don't have. But we're gonna go ahead with this for now. So I'm gonna turn on the air and go ahead and fix the bottom. And there we go, we have two nice flat feet. So we're going to, at this point, take out our drawer and we're gonna finish processing it over on the bandsaw. So this is still the front, this is the bottom, and this is the top of the drawer. What I wanna do is I wanna cut off a half an inch slice from the back, and then I'm gonna turn around and cut off a half inch slice from the front. So we're really gonna be pushing straight in here. We wanna keep it nice and flat against this back plate. And just take off the half inch.
Okay, while our blade's slowing down, let me walk you through the next part. So we've got the front and the back cut off of our drawer. And you'll see why that's important here in just a minute. Now with this, it's not super important that we get uh, the pencil or marker off afterwards. So I'm not gonna worry about putting a template on the top. What we're gonna do is just look at the inside. I almost just drew this on upside down. We're gonna wanna cut a cup out of this from the top. And so we can go ahead and, you know, maybe, maybe right there, have a little bit of a rounded piece coming down to a long swooping ride around, not that close. And then we're gonna wanna come up here. I just want that to ease down around. So I'm gonna take that over to the table saw and I'm gonna draw that on better with a darker marker. There we go. And that's what we're gonna want our drawer to look like. So I'm gonna push this fence back again, get the, the bandsaw prepped and we're gonna cut that out. Go. The first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and clean up the outside of this piece. I don't actually want to touch the inside. This is going to get flocked. I need to make sure that I sand uh, some of these chips here out, some of these inconsistencies of the different layers. I have to make sure that's gone as well. Okay, so we've basically got a nice smooth surface the whole way around. Just keep kind of dragging your hand along as you're making adjustments. You can see where there's a dip and where there's not a dip. There's still a little piece here that's a little high, but it's completely unnoticeable by the human eye. I think I'm good there. Make sure all of my layers are nice and flat with one another. Looks like I have a little part there that I'm gonna spend a few more seconds um, get that out of there. And then at that point, we will be ready for, for uh, reassembling the drawer. And there we go, it's completely out of there now. Time for the next stage. So the first thing we need to do, pull out this piece in the middle. We are not gonna need this for the completed drawer. We wanna get a good glue coat the whole way around
I'm just going to use my finger to spread this glue out. Now, it's okay if we get glue on the bottom. That's going to get sanded off. It's also okay if we get glue on the inside because that's where we're going to flock. So go ahead and lay down our front. Get it positioned on there. I don't have enough on my finger to cover the whole back. Now the thing is with the bandsaw, it doesn't always cut straight. But with the front and back of the drawer, that's actually a benefit. Because if the back or front is wavy, then when we put it directly back onto the same spot, it's pretty much going to use those waves as a key to register and get almost exactly the same spot we took it off. Now you're going to see once this dries and once we sand this, you're not even going to be able to tell that we cut these two pieces off. So I'm going to get one clamp started. Now don't place your clamp in the middles of the drawer and pull in. You're going to want to make sure that they're overlapping with this internal surface. Otherwise, you're just going to bend it all out of shape. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I'm going to get a couple more clamps here. I'm going to try to get these upper edges here. I just want to get these on that bottom edge sure that there's a good connection down there. And we are going to fill this with blocking, but I want to just get off as much of this glue on the interior as I can for now. Okay, before we call it a night, I'm going to go ahead and fill the holes that I know I have, like right here and right up here. So what I do is I keep some of this around. This is just some natural colored wood extract also known as sawdust so i get i just get this right out of my random orbit sander so i'm going to take a little bit of this out this is probably pine there might be oak mixed in there i'm going to take make myself a little bit of a glue puddle just like that i probably used way too much sawdust there but thankfully it's free i'm going to go ahead and mix this what we're looking for is a nice putty consistency. This is gonna get sanded down flat with the rest of it. And the nice thing about making putty like this, this is uh, stainable and it'll match the species of wood as long as you're using the same species of wood for the sawdust. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a nice dollop of it find one of our holes here we're just going to kind of work that down through that hole i'm not concerned about it working the whole way into the center although it looks like i am having some come through i just want to make sure that i get that nice filled in there My wood filler has made it the whole way inside and that's perfect that means it's going the whole way through there and we've gotten the whole thing filled with our makeshift putty so i want to go ahead and let this dry along with this piece and then uh, later tonight or tomorrow we'll come back and we'll be ready to sand down a little bit more shape the internal box and then we'll start doing some other pieces of it